Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. The name of the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh, Bahashem, in the name of of Yahweh Shah, the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem, in the name of Rachakwadash, the Holy Spirit that has been sent from on high, all right, into the minds of the servants in these latter days, so that we can stand on our feet, all right, call on our Father through the sacrifice of His only begotten Son, all right, and prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great and receive the victory, all right that was foreordained for the children of Israel, starting with the elect from the foundation of the earth. Now, I wanted to deal with this topic um, as I was reading comments yesterday. A brother left a comment that you have a group of men teaching that Paul went off, all right, because he called Timothy his son in the faith, which would basically make Paul, Timothy's father in the faith. All right. But we know that the scriptures say in Matthew 23, we'll get that when Yahweh Shai said, call no man father. All right. On the earth. All right. And we'll deal with that. All right. But you have a group of men teaching that Paul's writings are not 100 percent authentic and they're not 100 percent in line with the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. And if you don't have full understanding. All right. And if you're not spiritually discerned, then as Peter himself told us, Paul's writings will trip you up, all right, and cause you to spew that madness, all right? So I wanted to deal with this topic to show you all, all right, the balance of this, because you have to have balance. A lot of men have a false balance when they present the scriptures and um, they choke at the word. Now, as you see here, 1 Timothy 1 and 2, unto Timothy, mine own son, in the faith grace and mercy and peace all right now you have to understand as we'll get in the book of ephesians the scriptures take you know worldly relationships you know a husband a wife you know a, a father and a son you know and various different things all right even a, a sister and they liken them unto this wisdom being spread they liken them unto the church okay and we'll show you that but the, the 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 sentiment is that Paul is going off here for calling Timothy his son because they're saying he breaks Yahweh Shai's uh, uh, um, words here. All right, where Matthew twenty three and nine, and we'll get that and call no man father upon the earth. All right, for one is your father which is in heaven, and we'll get the context of that. Now let's go back here unto. Um, a few other scriptures first timothy's 1 and 18 this charge i commit unto thee all right son timothy all right because they had a very close relationship and paul was likened unto a father building up his son when it came to timothy all right who was a israelite foreigner gentile all right who eventually came into the fold and repented all right though he was raised in the customs of the greeks as we all were Okay. Okay. According to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou mightest uh, war in the good warfare. All right. As you build your own son up. Okay. Now, is your son going off for calling you his father? No. All right. You have to understand what Yahweh was uh, talking about and what was going on at that time to understand why he said that. Okay. Now, we don't go around calling the men who Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, um, set up to guide us, our fathers, all right, we call them our elders, we give them double, double honors, all right, but I just wanted to deal with this situation, all right, I'm in no shape, form, or fashion saying that we should go around calling, you know, the apostles father, all right, now spiritually they are fathers, all right, because they've guided us in ways that our own fathers, our earthly fathers, okay, did not do, all right? And you do have fathers in the spirit, all right? 
but we're not ordering you to go around calling you you call him father that's your you know no all right but all things are spiritual and should be understood on a spiritual level so that we don't have these dumb arguments all right to timothy my beloved dearly beloved son grace mercy and peace from god the father and yahweh shah hamashiach our lord now this is also in philippians just wanted to get all of these scriptures where they're saying paul is going off philippians 2 and 19 but i trust in the lord yahweh shah to send timotheus shortly unto you that i may be of good comfort when i know your estate speaking to the church of uh philippi all right he's going to send timothy all right we also sent to ephesus all right to basically um build them up okay for i have no like no man like-minded who will naturally care for your estate meaning i know when i send him he's going to get the job done he's going to build you all up in the faith and be a great uh, example all right of yahweh bashim yahweh to bring you back okay to the father it says for all seek their own not the things which are Yahweh Shah Hamashiach's, and you have men to this day that seek their own glory. All right, but ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he served with me in the gospel. All right, so first off, let's look up this word father. As a matter of fact, let me go into the uh, this book I have, and you know. Because there's customs, there's there's words that were used, okay, as slang, just as we have slang here. There was slang in the ancient world that goes back to the East, all right? To be the father of something was also to be someone who started a trend, all right? And we know that Yahweh Shai and the 144,000, all right, are ultimately the church fathers, all right? When you get uh, real quick, we'll get right back to this. When you get Colossians, the uh, first chapter, Colossians, the fourth chapter, okay? Speaking of Yahweh Shai, it says, verse 17, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, okay? Yahweh Shai is the church father, all right? And we'll get that in the book of isaiah the uh, ninth chapter he's the everlasting father but we'll we'll show you what that means all right the head of the body the church who was the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have preeminence for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell okay so he is the head of the church the body all right and what's the church all right yahweh shai all right the 144,000. All right, in the large multitude, okay? But Yahweh Shai and the 144,000 are the heads, okay, of the church, all right? Just as on the left-hand side, you have these Edomites calling themselves church fathers. Well, the true church fathers were chosen in the heavens, okay? Now, before we get into that book, let's look up this word father in the Greek, and we'll look it up in the Hebrew as well, okay? Father pater all right pat uh like you have the uh, patriarch you know which this world is trying to destroy the patriarch all right the, the man being the head all right it says generator or a male ancestor uh neither air, uh ancestor all right just as we have you know uh the fathers of the promise are we going off for calling abraham isaac and jacob the fathers of the promise no are we going off for calling, all right, those, all right, who the Heavenly Father left behind, their acts in the form of, you know, the, the, the writings, the scriptures, the history, are we wrong for saying, all right, that they are our fathers? No. We'll get you the understanding of what Yahweh Shai meant in Matthew, the 23rd chapter. This is Sirach 44 and 1. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begot us. What does it mean by this? see that and it's speaking of the men of the lord and it gave all right names all right of particular men all right uh, uh uh enoch noah okay and various other men as you read 
from Sirach 44, all right, through 51. David, you know, the various men, all right, those are our fathers in spirit. Now, going back, it says metaphorically, all right, metaphorically, because you have a carnal sense, all right, and then you have a spiritual sense of a father, the originator or transmitter of anything, okay? In the in the in the in the ancient world, to say someone was the father of something, meaning they started a trend. As a matter of fact, before I finish this, let's get that book, all right, uh, biblical manner and customs, and we'll be right back. All right, so this is uh, from the book uh, Manners and Customs of the Bible. Um, it's written by James M. Freeman. Uh, the cover kind of came off, but if you uh, look it up. That's kind of how the uh, cover looks. It's kind of in that uh, yellow and blue. Um, now, this is a good book because um, the way we were raised here in the West, you know, um, is uh, totally contrary to the East. You know, and um, when you read this book, it gives you insight on particular customs. As you're reading the scriptures, you can read uh, this book and particular things you run across. It may slip, you know, uh, you know, it may go over your head, but you can read this book and what it'll do, it'll give you insight of particular customs or things that was going on at the time. All right. So that you can just get a, you know, more of an insight on what was happening. All right. Because as the scriptures say, woe to you who have turned everything upside down. Okay. That's why when we bring out a lot of ancient ancient customs and things that happened back then, a lot of our people, you know, they don't know how to take it because of the way they've been raised here in America, all right, which is a uh, total trash. Now, this is um, manner and customs of the Bible. It, it, it's Genesis, and actually, you know, the the very first one is the use of the term father. Interesting. Um, this is Genesis 4 and 20. It gives the uh, scripture um, of Cain's family line. It says, And Adah bare Jabal, and he was the father of such as dwell in tents. Okay? He was the father of one as such as dwell in tents, showing you the use of the term father. Just as we, you know, we say, um, you know, he's the goat. You know, uh, a Purdue like Quincy Jones, he's the goat. You know, Jay Dilla, he's the goat. Whatever it may be, you could you you know that term father is used for someone who started a trend as well. Now, let's read this. It says, um, "In the East, the originator of any custom is frequently spoken of as the father of that custom." All right. So also, a man is often described by representing him to be the father of some particularity which distinguishes him from others a man of very long uh a man of very long beard is called the father of a beard okay and it keeps giving uh, particular uh examples it says one of the arabs who accompanied palmer in his journey across the desert of the exodus is called the father of the top knot because of the lock of hair at the top of his head which was an unusual size i guess that's some other history um you know just given particular customs of the east um let's see here father of the air he gives you some more now let's just go here for the sake of time in like manner jabal as we just read was called the father of such as dwell in tents because he was probably the inventor of tents and Jubal, the father of all such as handled the harp and organ because he invented the instruments. Thus, this use of the term father is found also in other parts of the Bible. Okay, so when dealing in truth. Okay, let's go here real quick. Um, it says in Isaiah, all right, the Messiah. Speaking of Yahawashai, which we'll go into that scripture, is called the everlasting father. All right. Now, people get all bugged out over that. All right. But 
all wisdom, the fullness of wisdom dwells in him. Okay. Under the most high. All right. He is also a father. All right. The most high God, Yahweh, is the father. All right. But he put all fullness and wisdom in him. Okay. And under him. All right. The first fruits are also fathers. This is the church. All right. As um, on the left hand, they have their uh, church fathers. Well, on the right hand, there's church fathers. All right. Who were birthed or born in the heavens. All right. And they're known as the first fruits. Okay. Says the everlasting father, the father of eternity, that is the giver of eternal life. Um, I believe that's John 8 and 44. Um, the devil is called the father of lies. See that? <laughs> um, in Romans, Abraham is said to be the father of the circumcision. Okay. All right. God is called the father of mercies. All right. It says there is a corresponding use of the word children. All right. So as you can see, this term father, all right, ancient customs, all right, has more of a, 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 a use in basis on a person's attribute or their order. All right. So as we go into this lesson, you'll get more of an understanding on this term father. And we'll get more of an understanding on what Yahweh Shai meant, all right, when he said, call no man father, Shalom. In the 10th verse, speaking of Yahweh Shai, and had, you know, and he's the one who opened the seals. He loosed the seals so that we can receive the Holy Spirit. And you can read about that in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. He sent down gifts, all right, once he descended. All right, and off, you know, had to be a sacrifice, ridiculed. You know, he died, but he conquered death. He rested in the earth, then he conquered death, came, you know, broke bread with the, you know, particular men and women of the church, and he ascended back to the Heavenly Father. So, he had what? He can send down the Holy Spirit. All right. And who did he send it down to? To the Gentiles. <laughs> All right. But what does it say of him? Revelation 5 and 10. It has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. OK, so we're going to be brought back to the heavenly father as kings and priests under what order? Remember, Melchizedek was what? Melchizedek, Genesis 14 and 18, was king of Salem and priest of the Most High God. All right? As the scriptures say, the law is going to go forth of Jerusalem. Okay? And what is that going to be? Yahweh Shai and the 144,000. That's going to be the governing body. All right? But that priesthood is not going to be after the order of Aaron which is where that temple and those duties and all of that, you know, as a matter of fact, the scriptures say, Revelation 20, and there's so much more I want to get. Let's see. Revelation 21 and 22, and I saw no temper there, temple thereof, all right, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it all right and that temple is described the tabernacle of the most high is with men all right and we get that through obedience all right what did samuel say first samuel 15 and 22 and samuel said have the lord all right as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices all right as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, all right, and to hearken than the fat of rams, okay? And that's what Israel forgot, all right? But now, through this grace period, we're remembering, all right, and we're walking in obedience, all right, to the Spirit, 
all right and keeping the laws to the best of our ability but um with that i'm going to end it um lord will if you have any questions feel free to ask them on the comment board as pertaining to this topic shalom giving all praise to you how about shai Basham Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutation to the elect. Shalom. All right, so there it goes. All right, so going back to this definition for fathers in the Greek, we'll also go to it in the Hebrew. All right, metaphorically, the originator or transmitter of anything. Okay, the authors of a family or society of persons animated by the same spirit as himself. All right, so we are in the same spirit as Noah. All right, he is a father. He is an example. And through reading his sacrifice, we are built up and trained in what we should do, as well as Enoch, as well as, uh, uh, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. All right. Now, you know, uh, David, Solomon. All right. Now, these men also, you know, had points where they fell. All right. But we are to learn from their mistakes. Right. But anyway, it says one who has infused his own spirit into others. All right. As Paul did with Timothy, who. Uh, Accutates and governs their minds. You see, and that's, you know, Yahweh Shai in the 144,000. All right. Yahweh Shai is the very beginning of the most high's wisdom okay and after him the first fruits all right were created those are the church fathers okay if you can receive it on the right hand side all right one who stands in a father's place and looks after another in a paternal way all right now what does the scripture say they watch over your souls Okay. Hebrews 13 and 17, obey them that have the rule over you. And this is what a lot of men, you know, don't want to do. So, you know, they're, they're headstrong and as children without any, you know, uh, guidance, they go off and do and say and start. All right. To basically say and do foolish things. Obey them that have rule over you. All right. And submit yourselves. For they watch over your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you okay so there are men that the heavenly father set up to watch over our souls okay and as we are built up all right we watch over souls okay so father can be looked at in that sense as in in the scriptures Okay, and we'll go uh, uh, to Matthew as well. Um, a title of honor, okay? A title of honor. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and get Isaiah nine. Isaiah nine. Okay. Speaking of Yahweh, shot for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government. All right, the priesthood shall be upon his shoulder. This is the high priest. Okay, Yahweh Shai will not have to answer to any of the descendants of Aaron in the kingdom to get into the Holy of Holies. Okay, <laughs> and his name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor. All right, the Mighty God. Okay, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, people get bugged out over this and say, see, he is. The most high god no he isn't the most high god okay the most high god breathe him into existence all right he is the son of god okay just as adam is the son of god you see he trained adam in the ways of righteousness but in the heavens all right that happened first when he spoke his son into existence now the word for father in the hebrew is abba Okay, now we know the most high God, all right, is the father, all right, and his only begotten son has been given all authority. So Abba, father of an individual, 
the God of a father, father of his people, head or founder of a household, group, family or, or clan. And Yahweh Shai is the head of the church. OK, just as Adam was the head of the church, he was the head of the sons of God. He was the son of God. OK, and he passed the breath that the most high breathed directly into him. All right, down to his sons on the right hand side, starting with Abel, who was slew, then Seth and so forth. Ancestor. All right. That's why we are the sons of God. OK. Sons of God. Grandfather. Uh, forefathers, a person of people, originator of a patron of a class. Okay, the originator of the elect starts with Yahweh Shai. Does not the scripture say he's elect and precious? Okay, the Lord is coming for the elect, but who's the who's the foref who's at the forefront of that? First Peter two and six. Wherefore it is contained in the scriptures, behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect. See that? Precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Okay, he's the head. Okay, he's the high priest of the spiritual <laughs> priesthood, spiritual temple. Okay, so the originator or, or patron, all right, let's look at this word patron, of a class. That's why looking up words... Because you can go to the scriptures and try to make an argument based upon a particular scripture easily. We can all do that. All right. But with balance. OK. And looking at things through the spirit, things are ironed out, man. And this is how we are to present the scriptures, man. OK. Patron. Let's see here. A person who gives finance, gives financial and what is the what is the real money? What's the finances we've received? Is this truth or support or other support to a person, organization, cause or activity? And Yahweh Shai is the beginning of wisdom under the most high God, Yahweh. Sponsor, backer, financer, underwriter, all right, contributor. You know, he's our high priest. Okay? And he sent down gifts in the form of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, so a patron of a class, profession, or art. What's our profession? Okay. As a matter of fact. Hmm. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life wherein too thou are also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses okay hebrews 10 and 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised okay hebrews 3 and 1 wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling see that Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay. All right. But another other other um, examples, producer, generator, benevolence. All right. And protect protection, term of respect and honor, ruler or chief. All right. And the order is the most high, his son, and the 144,000. All right. That's that. That's uh, where the fullness of wisdom will dwell. All right. And then the Lord has put the spirit on the large multitude. All right. To have ears to hear or ultimately to have spirits on them that the Lord will be pleased with and he'll have mercy on. I'm going back to the Greek. For father okay patar okay um let's see one who has infused his own spirit into others and accutates and governs their minds all right the lord is setting up a government okay government means to c govern control meant mind 
in righteousness. See, and that authority has been given to Yahweh and his men. That will be the governing body on the earth. And right now that government is being built up. One who stands in a father's place and looks after another in a paternal way. All right. And, you know, we, we need that. All right. Coming out of this captivity and these different things that we've learned. All right. There we have to we have to be guided. Even grown men. All right. By men who may be younger than you. In the spirit. All right. They act as fathers. To train you and guide you back to the ways of righteousness. It's no thing of pride, which is what those wicked scribes and Pharisees were doing and exalting themselves, which is why Yahweh Shah said, don't even take their position. And we don't. We're not going around telling you to call us father. Okay? But does that mean that there are not spiritual fathers? No. Okay? He also said, all right, uh, uh, don't call a man rabbi. Does that mean there weren't rabbis? But we'll get to that in just a minute. Teachers as those to whom pupils trace back the knowledge and training they have received. <laughs> I mean, come on now. The members of the Sanhedrin whose uh, prerogative it was by the virtue of wisdom and experience in which they excelled to take charge of the interests of others. All right, God is called the Father of the stars heavenly luminaries because he is their creator intelligent beings uh sea of christians which are the followers of the messiah israelites as those who through hamashiach have been exalted to a specially close and intimate relationship with god they can also be called fathers and who no longer dread him as a stern judge of sinners but re, re, revere him as a their reconciled and loving father all right the father of Yahweh Shahamashiach and the one whom the most high has united to himself in the closest bond all right of love and intimacy and, and when you get Proverbs the eighth chapter get that real quick in the beginning that's what they did okay proverbs 8 salakia remember yahweh shai when he was um on his you know when he was about to give up the ghost he asked the father he said i did my job now return me to the, the glory which i had with you from the beginning and what was that let's go to proverbs 8 and let's see here basically from the beginning you know when he prepared the heaven proverbs 8 and 27 when he prepared the heavens i was there all right in the beginning the alahayim the judges the rulers who the lord set up and who's the head of that yahweh shai all right, created the heaven and the earth when he set a compass on the face of the death. All right, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of deep, when he gave, all right, to the sea his decree. This is going to the creation story that the water should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him. This is wisdom speaking. All right, and who wrote Proverbs? Solomon. Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight. All right, rejoicing always before him. He was brought up with him, just as your son is by your side learning. Well, the Heavenly Father did that with Yahweh Shai in the heavens. Okay, I was as one brought up with him. Let's look up the word brought up. Ah, ma, one. All right, artificer, architect, master, uh, uh, workman, skilled workman. So he learned directly from the Most High himself. He is the wisdom of the Most High. All right, now let's go here to 1 John 2 and 14. I have written unto you fathers, he's speaking to the church, and he refers to them as fathers, 
because ye have known him that was from the beginning. Now, who is that speaking of? What did Yahweh Shai tell his disciples? Okay, which we know it's 144,000. All right. But some of those men were directly on the earth with him, following him when he came in the flesh. What did he tell them? John 15 and 27. And ye shall bear witness because ye and, and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Okay? The true church. Okay, and that's what we're fighting to get back into that heavenly estate and finally rule on earth and not have to deal with this flesh and be perfect. First John two and fourteen, I have written unto you fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Okay, so there are church fathers on the right hand side. All right. I have written unto you young men because you are strong, because as we've received this word in these latter days, we're young men. Okay. Even. All right. The uh, brothers who come into this, you know, at an older age, you're, you're technically you're a young man. Okay, because you're strong. And the word of God abideth in you, okay, and ye have overcome the wicked one. So the word abideth in these particular men, therefore they have the victory, which is why when you read Revelation 14, it tells you, Revelation 14 and 1, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him 144,000. Hey, these are the fathers, Yahweh Shah and the 144,000 having the fathers, his father's name written in their foreheads. Because what did Yahweh Shah say? All that you have given me, I have given them. All right, this is how we have the victory. Okay? If we're not those men, they are somewhere, and that's how Israel will get the victory. All right, through their words, through their message. Okay? <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, man. All right, it is programmed in them from the beginning to overcome, to win. They're not gonna, they're not gonna bow to the image of Baal. It is implemented in their makeup to persevere and to win. All right, so let's go to Matthew, the twenty-third chapter. All right, as Yahweh Shah is cursing out these wicked scribes and Pharisees, man. All right, Matthew 23 and 1. Now, this is what men use to say, well, Paul went off. All right, showing you that they don't have full understanding and they're not in the spirit. All right, and all you have to do is repent. But because of pride, what men will do is, is, is go further off into the wickedness, man. All right, because you got Israelite groups teaching Israel that Paul be going off in his doctrine. Okay? And you going off. All right? And this is why we're addressing this. All right? Matthew 23. I remember ITR uh, came with that whole father thing. But this argument itself comes from the Sakari. Okay? I remember they were dealing with Vocab Malone. And they made the argument that Paul was going off. All right. But you just have to understand Paul in spirit and you have to know and discern and have balance and to understand what he was doing. He was what? The head of the uncircumcised. All right. So he couldn't be. All right. As fervent in bringing them in, saying they have to keep this law, that law, that law. All right. Because remember, we're under grace. All right. But those issues were uh, actually dealt with and there, and, and there were problems going back and forth. Even with the circumcision who believed came at Paul at particular points. You know, that's why we have to go into Acts, the 21st chapter. All right. But Paul's message. All right. Was sent directly from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. OK. But yes, there were issues in the church. As pertaining his stance on particular things sometimes but he had all right to what break it down all right in spirit using balance which we should do 
Matthew 23 and 1. Then spake Yahweh shot to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And these are the wicked scribes and Pharisees who did not accept his position. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do ye not after their works. For they say and do not. They were hypocrites. Okay? For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders. What they were doing were making laws out of laws. Okay? They would go into the Hebrew characters and make laws out of the Hebrew characters to where it was no way back to the Father. They were going too far. They were boasting in the temple. Okay, they were boasting in sacrifice and they did not acknowledge Yahweh. And you have these same kind of characters around today. Okay, IUIC comes in that spirit. You have a lot of men who really undermine Yahweh, man, to put themselves in position to be these great niggas. <laughs> but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. All right, now all of a sudden we're at the very end. And they're telling you to openly break the law, all right, by putting foreign, you know, juices inside of you, man. All right. For all their work they do to be seen of men, all right, they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, all right, boasting in the fringes. Here it is. The fringes were for Israel to remember to not be disobedient to the law which one of you guys boasting in the fringes look at the fringes all right when it comes to not eating pork or to not sleeping with another man's wife the fringes are in your mind he that is a jew is one inwardly but you have men who boast in these outwardly customs which is nothing wrong with fringes but these men boast in them and they try to accompany salvation with their fringes if you don't have your fringes on IUIC said before on numerous occasions when the Lord returns you're not going to be delivered okay a brother walks up where your fringe is at you see so you mean to tell me you're boasting that you need to look at fringes in order to uh, uh, remember not to sin but I did a lesson on that if you need a uh, that lesson just let me know and I'll uh, post it on a comment board or whatever. But it says, um, in love, the uppermost rooms at feast, they want to, you know, they love to be exalted. They love to be, you know, uh, men bowing to them and praising them. All right. As these great men and the chief seats in the synagogues, they want to be the chief. All right. And sit in the seat in the synagogues. And this is what these men were doing. Whereas you had all of these Israelite, all right, castoffs waking up, fervent in the faith, following, and they wanted to close it up like, hell no. These Gentiles can't be received back, okay? They're castaways. That's why Yahweh said they shut up the kingdom of heaven. Let's see here. Let me get through this. It says, in greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. They love that. So Yahweh Shah is giving an example of what they do. Now, what does Rabbi mean? All right, my great one. Okay. My honorable sir. Rab B. All right, and we'll go to the Hebrew origin of it. I never looked that up. Let me see the Hebrew origin of it. Here we go. It is Rabbah. All right, much, many, great, more, numerous than, abundant, enough, strong, exceedingly, captain, chief. All right. <laughs> And this word is used in the, in, the, in the scriptures. And you can look it up, how it's used and where it's used. But it just means great one, you know, chief. 
rabbi, a title used by the Jews to address their teachers. All right. And also honor them when not addressing them. Okay. Now. Yahweh Shai was called rabbi on many occasions. Okay. And he didn't tell the person who called him rabbi that they were going off. Okay, here it is, Mark 9 and 5. And Peter answered and said unto Yahweh Shai, Master, which is that same word, it is good for us to be here. Let us make the tabernacles, all right, uh, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, okay? He called him Master again here, okay? Various times Yahweh Shai was called uh, rabbi or master. And they weren't rebuked for that. Okay. Now we're not saying go around, you know, calling the apostles and elders rabbi. But what we're showing you is what needs to be taken from Matthew 23. Okay. What did Yahweh Shai say? But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even in Hamashiach. All right. And ye are all brethren. Okay. Now, he's telling them, be not like these niggas, man. Because they were very high-minded. Don't follow after their ways. Okay, just, 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 just teach the word. And call no man father upon earth, for one is your father in heaven. Okay, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Hamashiach. Okay. So he's basically saying, be not like these niggas, man. Okay, now, because he said this, does that mean that there are not fathers set up in the spirit? No. Okay, what does Ephesians say? Ephesians 5, as Yahweh Shai took, you know, carnal examples of husband and wife, father and son, and, and accompanied to the church. And real quick, this is how you know he's speaking of the church as he gives these worldly examples. Ephesians 5 and 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Hamashiach and the church. See, he was using the example of a husband and a wife. All right, a, a man leaving his father and his mother to be joined unto his wife as, all right, Yahweh Shai and the church, right? Now, Ephesians 6 and 1 says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You see that? Now you are to honor, all right, your actual mother and father. The scriptures, as it says in verse 2, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, all right, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live as alone, all right, but also your parents in the Lord are to be obeyed, okay? As it says, the uh, hoary head, the elders of the church, okay? Technically, in spirit, they are the church fathers. All right. But what Yahweh Shai was saying in Matthew 23 is to not go around boasting. All right. And, and, and that and, and as if, OK, uh, uh, shutting up the kingdom of heaven and being a high minded nigga. All right. As these scribes and Pharisees did. OK, that's why he said in verse 10, neither. Be called masters for one is your master, even Hamashiach. All right. But he that is greatest among you. All right. Shall be your servant. And that's how we're to act with one another. We're here to serve one another, not to be high minded towards one another. Lord over one another. OK, as those wicked men were doing. And what and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. You have a lot of men exalted themselves. Okay? We exalt the truth of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, not ourselves. Okay? And that he shall hump and he that humble himself shall be exalted. Alright? And this is what he was teaching them. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, all right? And that's what they were doing. They were basically making laws based upon laws, 
all right coming up with all of these tr traditions and, and different things that basically made it impossible but they were very popular people knew of them so people were looking into them and wooed by them because of their reputations but they were absolute tyrants and niggas inwardly they were full of dead man's bones man and you can see examples with those guys from IUIC, ISUPK, in other camps. Okay? You've even had those men come up from amongst Great Millstone. Alright? And get casted out. And if there's more, they're going to get cast out. Okay? So, that's what that's talking about. He was cursing out the wicked scribes and Pharisees. So, Paul was not wicked for referring or, or going off for referring to Timothy as his son okay there are fathers in the spirit that begat us okay through their works and we look to them for guidance every time we read okay and as you read Sirach 44 it, it names the names of these particular fathers man Noah is one. Enoch is one. Abraham is one. Okay? But we know that the main father is the Most High God, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai. You see? But these various men that we read about, all right, are also our fathers in spirit, all right? And they're a part of the 144. Okay? Moses. Okay, which it's his tabernacle that Yahweh is going to sit on, the tabernacle of David. Okay, Aaron, these are various men that we are to look to. Eleazar, David, you see? Caleb, all right, these are the fathers in spirit, if you can receive it. So I'm going to leave it there. On to the next one. Shalom.